Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Warwick F1 show. And in this installment, we are going to be talking uh, about uh, Belgium, the upcoming race that is happening this weekend, and talking about predictions, talk about the track, and um, just our general thoughts and things. So today, I'm your host. Um, so I guess the first thing we can start with is. Belgium is the last race before the summer break. Uh, what are your thoughts on it being before the summer break? Other than absolutely criminal, that is before the summer break. No, I mean, it was normally kind of the first race back, and I think just that tradition has kind of made it. So whenever I see it before the summer break, it kind of just feels wrong in terms of where it is on um, on the calendar. But I think for this time, and a li- oh, I think for this time, we're kind of in a position where we almost want more races before that summer break. We've kind of got different narratives going on. We've had the McLarens, obviously, after Hungary, kind of have that old whole team order drama. Obviously, Verstappen's um, Verstappen's quite a stormy race um, on the radio. And I think you'll see a lot of those kind of patterns continue. Will you see McLaren um, be able to kind of get over the fallout? of their one two last week uh will verstappen who seems to be taking a penalty will he be able to kind of climb up the grid if he does take a 10 place or a five place drop and will i guess mercedes and ferrari as well will they be strong and kind of make it a race where i think six or six or seven cars could perhaps have a chance at least at least at the podium and maybe winning as well Am I the only one who actually doesn't really mind that it's before the summer break? It seems like everyone's been affected by this issue, but I think as long as we, I think for me, as long as we, as long as we have a Belgium Grand Prix, it's, 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 it's a good thing because we know it's, it's probably, I'd argue, one of the best actual races tracks on the calendar. You think of the amount of elevation changes, you obviously got El Rouge as your, classic um just really well known and kind of notorious uh turn in uh and set of corners in a way and if um what we've been saying and and looking at the weather at least as we know it can typically be in belgium i think it's going to be a really exciting race especially as we know the amount of race winners now we had our seventh uh i think it's seventh race winner uh last weekend in hungary of the season uh with oscar piastri and it really seems like it's anyone's game and it's it's a really nice position to be in where we generally have no idea who is going to be winning the race. And I think Belgium this year, I've got very high hopes for it. So I'm, I'm hoping for a good race. Yeah, I mean, I think as well as that, coming into this race, you're kind of in a unique position of, as you mentioned there, the weather. It's currently looking like it could be raining for all of Friday and all of Saturday. So the teams aren't, if if that does happen, the teams aren't going to get any dry running to get their setups in place to get the cars in the optimal window. We might have a qualifying where you could see some of the some of the kind of top drivers drop out early on. You could see some drivers who maybe are nearer the bottom, the ones that are really good in the wet, maybe climb up the grids, and you could have a mixed up grid for the start on Sunday and I think as well competitive wise McLaren are going to be up there Verstappen's going to be up there but if we look at what we saw with um, Silverstone a kind of long fast flowing track uh, the Mercedes were up there and that that is what Spa is it's long it's fast it's flowing Um, so you could I mean you could have what you saw in Silverstone again a kind of five-way battle for the race win and I think it's fair to say Silverstone was one of yeah no it's true and I, I guess also another factor as well we are talking about five cars um, that could do it is also probably going to be a probably a big testing point for uh, some other drivers who are probably fighting for the seat at the moment uh, I probably want to just bring on to Sergio Perez because especially with as the rumour stems are starting to grow now with him with his seat being at risk, even though he does have the contract extensions and all, all that stuff. With Spa generally being a Red Bull strong stronghold, and especially with, you know, we saw last year with Verstappen absolutely dominating 
Spa. Um, was it this, was it this year or the year before where he started? Um, in he was like thirteen, fourteen. But within ten laps, he literally um, finished in first. He was already in first place. So I guess especially this could be a, a strong point for him to you know show his worth again, despite you know the really really poor run of form he's had. But yeah, I guess. Uh, what would you I, think I about you that? Just, I thought you were just trying to tempt fate personally with your, as we'll come on to your predictions a bit later on, maybe trying to tempt fate that this is the, the last straw for Red Bull and Sergio Perez. But certainly it's it's a very good opportunity for him to show his worth. But also I think Max Verstappen in this race could be equally as interesting. We're all kind of anticipating that this might be where he takes some engine penalties. So we might see a Verstappen drive from the back of the grid up to first place. And what we've seen from him this race of uh, coming behind um, and trying to catch up to the lead drivers, it, it really hasn't uh, gone well for him at all. Um, I'm thinking, well, obviously what happened uh, in last race, uh, especially where he um, dive-bombed Hamilton and pretty much wrecked his and Hamilton's car. And so I think it can be very interesting um, for the Red Bulls. I think they have a point to prove by now. Um, and both Stappen and Perez have uh, what are going to be really looking for some good outcomes when it comes to this race. Uh, especially given how the last few races have been. And it's maybe the first time, uh, I, I like to say in a while, that maybe Red Bull have been seriously in doubt of of whether they can control the race, especially as well with Silverstone. We know that with it being a fast-flowing track, as Will mentioned, then... It could be easily Mercedes as well. We could, I, I certainly wouldn't be surprised. I think, don't think anyone would be surprised by seeing a Hamilton or a Russell win. Um, and it's really up in the air. And, and that's, I guess that's what's going to be so exciting about it is that we, as I mentioned, we don't know who is going to win the Belgium Grand Prix. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a place for Red Bull to really claw some points back and especially with slowly with the lead at the top of the Constructors Championship coming down very 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 quickly at this rate with i believe there's only about 50 points now between them and red them and mclaren and you know mclaren have been an absolute have been steamrolling it at least when it was consistently being towards the top of the grid um always you know with this obviously the ability to win races is still something to be questioned as we discussed last week as well um you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very interesting one to see who has the momentum going into the summer break, and yeah, I guess do you reckon um, do you reckon McLaren can potentially cl- close the gap maybe into the single digits of this race? I think so. I think it's for for the actual gap to close down on Red Bull because realistically, I think we would a lot of us were talking about. Uh, a championship battle between Norris and Verstappen, or between McLaren and Red Bull in Britain and in Hungary. I still kind of thought that it was a little too early for that conversation to be happening because Verstappen was still had a very comfortable lead. Obviously, we're comparing him to last season, which isn't very fair because last season was just completely unlike anything we've ever seen in terms of dominance. I think this race could be absolutely key for McLaren because... If they win this race, if they get maybe a 1-2 like they did in Hungary, then they can carry that momentum into the summer break. And if they can really close that gap down, then you really will start to see Red Bull getting nervous for those races after the summer break. So I think this could be, just as it is also key for Red Bull, it's also key for McLaren because it's, I think it's, it's legitimate to start talking about some kind of a championship battle if McLaren can close the points down on this race. So I think both teams, when we talk about McLaren and Red Bull, have a lot to play for in in this race coming up. And also Mercedes could play a big role in that because if Mercedes take if Mercedes get good results, maybe they get a win, then Ultimately, you could say that benefits Red Bull because McLaren are the ones that are needing to close the gap on Red on uh, on on Red Bull, and not the other way around. So, it's going to be it's going to be a very key race for the remainder of the season, I would argue. Oh yes, for sure, and um, yeah, it's gonna 
is all going to really going to depend on who, who really puts the foot down on Sunday, who gets the strategy right, who gets he who, who's able to make the moves and overtakes, and all that sort of stuff. So I guess that kind of moves us on. I guess to you know our predictions and what what do we think is going to happen? So, I mean, I guess Callum, do you want to start off with uh, who do you think might you know will be in your top five? Who will win it? Who do you think will fumble? Well, um, I think well if we have our order because it's actually it is actually you first this this week, isn't it? So you're that's true. Actually. Um, so yeah, d- did you? Yep. Oh, I mean, did you want to go first if you if you uh, if you've got Verstappen first place? <laughs> yeah, I actually have got Verstappen. You first. Have, I you mean, actually have. You actually have got. I, I have actually gone first place because would, would be uh, too expected maybe earlier on the season, but uh, but, but, but even maybe with the not engine so penalty. much now. I am still taking that risk because, especially considering how good he is at this, this is one of, a this is one of his home tracks. Two, that he is ridiculously dominating at the circuit. Because uh, I will talk about that time when he started fourteenth, and then literally he he's made his way through the grid in about ten fifteen laps. Now, of course, the car is not as dominant as it is now, but I do I still reckon that the aero efficiency of that Red Bull was going to be really helpful on the back on that uphill straight, and yeah, it all really depends on the middle sector, really, whether the Red Bull can still hold its own in the medium to high speed corners, um, which I think, I think, which is strength of the Red Bull is actually more the lower speed corners at the moment, which I believe is actually holding them down more. Um, cause even, cause even when they took, even in Hungary, even though, uh, they were comparing Verstappen and McLaren's, McLaren's had the, uh, um, benefits on the first and third sectors where there were more straights and slow corners, but in the middle sector with the chicanes, the curb riding, it, that's, um, that's actually where, uh, the Red Bull actually came through, um, surprisingly. So in, until Verstappen gets floor damage from running over a bollard or something and then and oh, it yeah, could be a different story. But apart from that, yes, no, I think you're, you're yes. absolutely right. So yeah, I'm probably counting on that error efficiency that Red Bull 2 still be really, really good this track because this is one of those tracks where error efficiency what matters most compared to other circuits anyway. Um, so that's why I'm still going, I'm still going to put my money on Verstappen first and especially if the rumor is right where Marco has actually banned Verstappen from sim racing until three o'clock in the morning, then, you know, Verstappen might <laughs> actually be awake <laughs> enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'll quickly finish it up, uh, my top five. I've got Norris, Piastri, Hamilton, Leclerc, um, kind of just bog standard, really. We're expecting, I'm expecting McLaren to be in the both McLaren's will be in the podium at the very least. Hamilton is always up there. Uh, and between Leclerc and Russell, um, I'll, show, I'll quickly do my one, two, and three point while I'm here as well. So my one pointer, pretty simple, at least a safety car, red flag in the race. There's going to be something, you know, especially with the stakes so high at this, in, this point of the season at the moment. And the, and the nature of the circuit, you can, you yes, can especially at Radion. Like especially at Radion, where unfortunately Absolutely. it's. Uh, I do expect hopefully nothing drastic to does happen, even though we are some of us F1 viewers are a bit evil, um, and it is and stuff. But you know, it is what it is. Um, my my two pointer is that there's going to be a different uh, a different session topper in every single qualifying session. So Q1, Q2, and Q3, a different person will top that session. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it's certainly with the the number of different drivers that are in contention, it's uh, certainly not yeah. uh, an impossibility, I'd say. Because especially, yeah, because especially like I'll be probably looking at Verstappen. He's probably not going to go. Hunt. He might go first and sec, first second, first place in the Q one or something, but then second and third quali, then um, he might want to might not go as far if he's got that grid penalty, um, to at least save a mileage, and then. My third, my third one is, as you mentioned earlier, is that Perez loses seat and after an absolute disaster of a performance. That is an uh, abs- That is probably the best three point prediction I think I've ever heard it's in my like few months of being on this podcast. It is incredible. It's the first time I think we've predicted that a driver will lose his seat 
uh, by a race. And we should say as well that by summer break, we are, I think we're going to call it at when we do the review, we'll call that the cutoff point of when. Yeah. So, so Perez, you have uh, about just over a week to lose your seat and then Chimay <laughs> will retrieve his three points. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it should be very interesting to see. A uh, very creative uh, prediction from, from you there. I've got, I've got to hand it to you and it's, uh, it should be yeah. interesting to see if that one comes through. Um, so yeah, um, Callum, do you want to do yours next? I know. Yes, yeah. Well, I um, yeah, I think we're yeah, we'll, we're actually still waiting on Will Kingsman. I think he, he might be back soon. But uh, I was third place. Um, so spoiler alert for I think Will Kingswood has gone with Norris uh, first place. I was going to go Norris um, until I found out that 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 was uh, Will Kingswood's plan. And um, so I've gone with the other McLaren. I've gone with Piastri for first place i think i think it will be a mclaren um it definitely could be a tough battle with the mercedes especially as we know how strong mercedes was in silverstone which is a a track which is very similar nature to belgium i then said verstappen p2 uh i think it might be a possibility that he'll be up there despite any engine penalties that he may take and then norris p3 and then i put the two mercedes fourth and fifth uh, Hamilton fourth and Russell fifth. Interestingly enough, I think Chimay, you're the only person who's actually put a Ferrari in the top five. Which, to be fair, if you think about it, isn't isn't too surprising. I think realistically, it's it's again how we were a similar situation. I think uh, a, a few races back when it was Verstappen and then the two McLarens, two Ferraris. It's now a case of Verstappen and the two McLarens and the two Mercedes. So it's. And I think that's also what Will Kingswood has done as well with the Mercedes, the McLarens, and the and and Verstappen as well. So it's it just in, just depends on what kind of order we expect from that. But that's my top five. Um, so my one point prediction is that a driver comes off the track at El Rouge at some point in the weekend. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a retirement or a crash. Just I think they'll come off there, especially. And I think just again the nature of that corner, we know how notorious it is. I think that's that's very likely to happen. Uh, a two-point prediction, I think, is engine retirements. Uh, there's going to be at least one engine re- retirement during the race, um, which should be interesting as as we can expect drivers to maybe take new parts, um, maybe with engine penalty. So we'll see if those if those parts uh, remain. And then my three-point prediction, I'm hoping for a bit of chaos, uh, perhaps on a lap one incident like we saw in 2018, for example. Uh, 15 drivers or less are going to finish the Grand Prix. So five retirements, either due to crashes or engine retirements, as I've just said, uh, that that means that uh, 15 drivers or less are going to actually finish the race. And finally, Will, do you want to do your predictions? Great. So, right, my top five. So I think that on the back of his um, almost win in Hungary, Lando Norris is going to do it. He's going to get first place at the Belgian Grand Prix. I think it's, as far as I'm aware, it's one of his home tracks. I think one of his parents might have Belgian heritage. Am I right in saying that? I think it, well, Jim yeah, he's, it. I think he's got, he's got half Belgian, Belgian heritage, I believe. Well, so he didn't quite get the home track in Silverstone, but I think he's going to get it in Spa. Uh, well, just behind him, I've put the winner of um, Silverstone, Lewis Hamilton, to finish in second. I think Max Verstappen coming home in third. Obviously, we don't know yet as we're, as we're recording this whether he will be taking that engine penalty, but I think either way, uh, Verstappen third place kind of sounds about right. I've gone for Oscar Piastri in fourth, the winner, obviously, of the Hungarian Grand Prix, and then Charles Leclerc to round out the top five. Uh, my one, two, and three point predictions. My one point prediction, uh, McLaren, I have said, will outscore Red Bull. They'll close that gap a bit more in the Constructors' Championship. My two point prediction, I've gone for a surprise driver in the top five for Quali. I've said, and I've made it clear, Perez doesn't count as a surprise, but with the weather, that's coming in, I think that we could potentially see a driver that's not normally up there um, qualifying in the top five and maybe trying to hold on for those points in the race. And then for my two uh, three-point prediction, 
I've gone for two plus Eau Rouge or Blanchemont overtake. So I've said there'll be either two at Eau Rouge, two at Blanchemont, one at each. But I reckon two overtakes and they are some of the most spectacular overtakes on the calendar when we do see them happen. And I'm saying that we might we might end up with a couple um, at this race at the weekend. But yeah. When do we start counting uh, Perez in the top five of Quali as a surprise? I think it could be counted now, but I've just said... For, for Maybe after the these, summer break we can... <laughs> if we get any more of these. What could be his final race of the season? Of the, yeah, of the season and maybe of his career. I feel like... Oh, no, don't... Him be, I, I hope it's not as unceremonious as that, but still. It's... Well, we have known Red Bull to, to ditch drivers in the summer break, so it wouldn't be... If there was one team that was going to do it, it would be Red Bull. I mean, they did do it a year ago with a, a certain Nick De Vries being dumped. Yes, that as well. Yeah, I, know, I, was, I was thinking of um, Gasly, but yes, that as well. Yeah, Gasly went after the summer break, or in the summer break in 2019. It was Albon's first race was Belgium. Yeah. For Red Bull. He, as far as I can remember, he did quite well at that race. I think he got... I think he Didn't he come from something. behind? I think he came from behind, but maybe got... Maybe I got think, high up, I don't know. I think well, that was that the year that... No, that wasn't the through goes Hamilton. Or through through goes Vettel, or whatever the commentary no, was. No, uh, that, that, that was yeah, the year that before. Was, it, that was 18, Sebastian I think. And Vettel, that's the one. Yeah, no, that was, I think that was a bit before. That was 2018, but uh, still. Yeah. Hopefully, this time in a week, we shall be talking about some, some new moments which will go down in, in, in F1 history. Here comes Oscar yeah. Piastri. <laughs> here comes pastry <laughs> no, I, I'm looking forward to it I think it'll be a good race and definitely definitely one I'll tune in to yeah yep, certainly uh, as well yeah I'd, oh, I mean I'll, I'll actually I will be uh, I will be in the Netherlands I believe at that point but oh. we definitely will be uh, definitely will be looking for the time so you know th- let's see if we you've got to find far. a Dutch pub watch it with the oh no Dutch that goes without saying that goes without saying. <laughs> We're trying to find you're gonna, to, you're gonna have to be very careful around the staff and fans. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be fair, I think I'll probably try and find an orange t shirt the night before or something. Yeah, try and That's go possible. camouflage or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, no, let's see. We're looking at a good race. Got a good race up. Hopefully, we'll have to look forward to. Hopefully, Spa actually shows up and actually provides a good race. But, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Um, in that case, then, um, I guess thank you for listening. Thank you for Wilk and Callum for joining today. And, yeah, we'll see you at on the other side.